Hi friends, in this video I'm going to show you how to mix and handle green colors and also how to use them for realistic painting. Green is all around us and it is of course together with blue the most widespread color in the world. We associate green color with money, nature and aliens. Green is the color of life, prosperity and rebirth. The human eye is most sensitive to hues of green. Green is not a primary pigment color as it can be mixed from blues and yellows. We can't imagine today but as with other chromatic colors people have been searching for a truly green and durable pigment for centuries. Despite the wide variety of this color in nature, the green plant dye quickly turned brown and could not be used without significant restriction. If you, like me, want to mix your use of green, of course you need more than just yellows and blue colors. Greens can take on different hues and temperatures from warm yellow red greens to a cool bluish ones. As always, the final appearance of greens is determined by the type of lightning you are using same as with other colors, of course. Let's now take a look at practical example of green leaves in the picture. In both pictures you can see how light fundamentally determines the appearance of green colors. Both are illuminated from approximately the same direction. In the left picture the leaves are illuminated by bright warm sunlight. Green colors are lighter from the point of view of values, especially in directly lit parts of the leaves. Light penetrates through the leaves, manifesting itself by increasing the saturation of green and shifting its hue to a warmer yellow-green color. The picture on the right side is lit only by diffuse northern lightning of the blue sky. Blue light cools down the green hues and the green of the leaves shifts to the blue part of the spectrum. The light source has a lower intensity and does not penetrate through the leaves. Areas in shadows are therefore also cooler compared to the picture on the left. So if you want to mix warm and cool greens, you need to reach out for other colors that will shift the green to desired hue. Most greens are too chromatic to use directly from the tube, especially if your goal is for example a realistic landscape painting. The human eye is the most sensitive to the yellow green spectrum as I said before, so sometimes green can be too deafening in a painting. For an explanation of how to handle green, let's go back to 1855, when the art magazine The Crayon was published in New York, to which many important artists of that time contributed articles. Among them was the great landscape painter Asher Brown Durand, who addressed several articles to his students on the problem of green color. Especially in letter number 6, practical painting advice can be found. Nature generally struggles with every saturated color and never admits large, unchanging areas of the same color. The foliage of leaves, plants and grasses is constantly changing according to their species, location and light conditions. If you paint a vast forest or vast plains in one unchanging hue of green, it will be truly repulsive because nature never does it that way. On the contrary, nature paints with endless variation of green hues. Even trees of the same species vary in hue and break the monotonous coloring of the whole forest. Trees, shrubs and plants as barriers of green hues are a labyrinth of irregularities of infinite variety of shapes that struggle with a uniform appearance. If you look at the leaf in the sunlight, you will find that the top illuminated side is a cool green, while the underside is a warm green with an overlap into orange. This is due to the passage of light through the leaf, which then warms and shifts the warm red spectrum. The light thus progresses lower through the leaves, producing increasingly warmer and redder hues to complement the green. The actual shadows of the trees are therefore almost always more neutral than those of solids of the same green color. So let's recap everything we talked about in this video. Here are some specific tips and tricks to deal with green hues. First, mix your greens with yellows and blues. The resulting mixtures will be weaker in saturation and more varied in hues and temperatures. Second. 
try to avoid monotonic coloring. Vary your mixtures as much as possible. From cool to warm, from yellow red greens to cool bluish ones. Third, you can prime the canvas or board you are working with pinks or reds so that they show through here and here to enliven the greens. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching guys and see you in another video. Bye bye.